just seeing all your amazing faces and uh, the, the presence of God that's, that's here today. It's just tr truly incredible. And of course, we just joined all of our campuses. I do wanna take a moment and say hello to all the locations across the state of Alabama over into Georgia. We love you guys so much. Also today, just so grateful for all of our campus pastors. Pastor Blake right here at Grants Mill and all of our locations. Just wanna say we love you and we're so grateful for you. It's one church, one big family, which is amazing. Also wanna say hey to everybody who is joining us online or on demand at some point. And of course, as always, the men and women of the Alabama Correctional Facilities. I know I had you clapping a lot. One more time though, put your hands together for your church family. We love you guys so much. Well, I do, I sense God's presence here today and so excited. We're, we're jumping in a new, a new series. You're gonna hear more about that in a moment. I'll tell you about that. But, but first though, before that, we just gotta celebrate because uh, God is truly moving here at Highlands. We believe this is the year of miracles. Can I get an amen? And we're seeing that. I mean, just this past week, we had an amazing first Wednesday service. Um, God's doing amazing things at Highlands College. If I could have all day just to tell you the stories of what's happening there. Uh, but we gotta celebrate what happened last week at Easter, and I know you already heard from all your locations what happened at your campus, but I just wanna share with you guys so we can celebrate today just what God did, truly a miracle. Uh, we had over 100,000 people in church last weekend. That is just amazing, first off. Truly, truly a, a miracle. And of those, of course, we had our spiritual survey. Of those, and this first group is definitely a prayer request, we had um, 85 people who checked D. And if you weren't here last Sunday, that just means someone checked the box that says, I don't ever intend to choose a relationship with Jesus. And if you're one of those 85, I do believe there are some of those who are here or maybe uh, joining us online. We just want you to know we're praying for you and we're so grateful for you. And of course, we're gonna continue to pray that God does something great in, in your life. This next group is a big prayer request as well. And I'm so excited to say actually that we had 1,882 people who say they're just here, they're, they check C, they're just here checking us out. And I just, I think it's amazing that we have a church that allows this, that you can belong before you believe. And so if you're one of these people right here, the 1,882 that are just checking out Highlands, welcome. And just, we hope you experience God's presence today. And we're, we are praying for you in a big way. But this next number, everybody, is a true miracle. We had 6,444 people say yes to Jesus. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That is amazing. I never thought I would see something like that in my entire life, much less over a weekend. And so if you're one of these 6,444, welcome to the body of Christ. And today in this whole series is gonna have a lot for you. Uh, but I just gotta say thank you. Um, thank you to all of the Highlands family. Thank you for your generosity. As you sow into this church, you're sowing into opportunities, environments, campuses, ministries for that right there to happen. And so thank you for that. I'm telling you, we are a part of something bigger than we can possibly imagine. And God uses every gift in a huge way. Also gotta say thank you so much for praying. As PC kind of made the call even weeks earlier before Easter to pray, God really honored that. And we're gonna continue just to pray for more harvest this year. Amen? Amen. If that's, hey, listen, if that can happen on a weekend, imagine what can happen the rest of this year. Truly a year of miracles. And then finally, I just wanna say thank you so much for serving. Dream Team, you're my hero. <laughs> thank you for serving in the parking lots and kids ministry. Y'all, last week was wild. The 945 on Sunday last week was the craziest. I mean, it was crazier than Disney World or Six Flags or all that put together. And there was just smiles on every Dream Teamer's face. Can we put our hands together for the Dream Team? Love you guys so much. And so we are gonna head into a new series, but I just gotta share one more video with you guys or a video with you guys just to reflect because every one of these, every one of these numbers is a person, it's a story. And there is so much power in 6,444 because that's because there's so much power in every single one of those stories. And so our team put together just a video to show one story of life change that I think will encourage you today and then we'll jump into the message. Check out Gavin's story. In middle school, I kinda got bullied. Those words stuck with me, those were my identity. Whatever they would do, I would try to, you know, fit in, do what I thought was, you know, the best thing for me. After high school, things got way worse. I was in a fraternity now where I didn't know many people. I need to make friends, I need to be cool. And so I just started drinking every time I hung out with my friends. I'm getting kind of popular and what I thought was like, this is the life. I should be happy, you know? Just, I've, I'm still feeling lonely, depressed, just trying to do whatever I could to like find joy. I got home from the lake one day, hungover and depressed like usual. 
And it just got to a point where I was like, I cannot keep doing this. I texted the KA chaplain who's from my hometown. Just was like, dude, I need some help. He's like, come to the Bible studies, start reading your Bible. I was like, what, what, do, what do I read? He's like, read the Gospels. I was like, okay, which one? <laughs> he was like, John, okay. I open my Bible and just start reading John. And I don't even know what I'm reading, but I'm just reading about Jesus. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Like, and suddenly I couldn't stop smiling. I was like crying tears of joy. The Lord opened my eyes. I just gave up my life to Him. From that moment, I've just had a fire just for chasing that joy, chasing the Lord. Anything I could do to get involved, I did it. I started reading my Bible every day. I started praying to Him, actually like worshiping Him. I got on the dream team. I started serving at one, started serving at motion. I'm in three small groups and I lead one. I found a community of amazing people. Like I could, I could be, in, uh, I'm almost in tears. I never thought I could experience so much love. I know that there's still people feeling like how I was feeling. And so I'm trying to do everything I can to reach out. I just want people to experience this and have the opportunity to feel how I feel now, which is I'm never alone. The answer is Jesus. He stepped in and completely, completely transformed my life. Come on, celebrate Gavin's story. Isn't that great? Oh my goodness. I love it, I love it. And as I say to you, Gavin, there's clearly a call of God on your life. There's nothing like seeing a young person fall in love with Jesus and know they have the rest of their life uh, to make a difference. And so we're all honestly somewhere in our, in our spiritual journey and that's where we're heading over these uh, next seven weeks. And I love everyone who's made a decision and we're believing for everyone who will. But the truth is God has more for every single one of us. And so I'm really excited that our next series is called Disciple. And over the next seven weeks, we're gonna dig into that, that truth that God has more for every single one of us. And it's gonna be an opportunity for all of us to take next steps uh, in our journey with God, no matter where we are, to continue to grow in our walk with God. And this, this, this uh, series comes straight out of one of the most incredible, uh, powerful cornerstone verses in the entire Bible. This is Matthew 28. We call this the Great Commission. Some of Jesus' last words to us as he's about to ascend to heaven. It says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. If you wanna know what the job description is for a Christian, there it is right there is to go out in the world and to, and to make disciples of all nations. And disciples just meaning those who experience God and then continue to grow in their walk with Him. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. First off, I have to reflect on the last part of that verse. Anybody thankful out there that God promises to be with us? I and mean, that is a beautiful scripture. And we even heard that in Gavin's story. He's like, I'm never alone. And that's a beautiful promise. And I also love the fact that God gives us an opportunity to learn to obey. And in fact, that's actually what a pastor is, PC, and what all of us um, are here to do really is to be a shepherd, to help all of us, ourselves included, continue to learn how to obey the commands of God. So oftentimes we think of the Great Commission just as a, as a charge, which it is to go and make. But hey, everybody, if we're gonna go make disciples, we have to first be a disciple. <laughs> we have to be those who have learned in our, in our own journey how to obey God, how to follow his commandments. And I just had the thought that that word commandment you know, can feel so churchy and so heavy. So just to be really clear today, this is what that means. It says, uh, this is 1 John 5. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands. And here's a beautiful promise. And his commands are not burdensome. They are a blessing. The bottom line is this. Salvation is just the beginning. Salvation is a doorway that God opens up into a beautiful, flourishing, John 10, 10, abundant life journey with him. And the promise is that will, if we'll continue to learn to obey, we'll experience the love of God, that we'll learn how to live life in, its, in, its, in, in the way he designed it to be lived. And we'll also, here's the big deal, we'll also be able to make a difference in our world to then go and make disciples. And so that's where we're going over the next seven weeks. It's gonna be incredible. And that journey is something that I think for today, especially as we kind of kick this series off, that we just gotta be sure we understand. Because even when I say that word disciple, at least I feel this. Or maybe you've heard the, the phrase or the word sanctification, you know, or even spiritual journey or next steps. Oftentimes it can make us feel overwhelmed or we can feel pressure. And honestly, my job today as we kick off this series is just to take that pressure off and to make sure you know exactly the life that God has invited all of you into, whether you're one of the 6,444 
or you've been following God for years, maybe even decades, that God has something more for us. Amen, everybody? Okay, one of my favorite verses that kind of unpacks in a fresh way, at least for me, this verse was really powerful. Uh, What discipleship is all about is Ephesians chapter four, verse 13. And this is what God invites us into. It says, this will continue, this journey of growth, until we come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. So this is God's goal for all of our lives. No matter where we start, that we'll go into this journey and that we'll experience maturity and that we'll ultimately experience the full and complete measure of the standard of Christ. And this is what that, that text means. In the original language, that word mature is the word teleos. And this is a beautiful promise that God wants to finish and complete our lives. We all have weaknesses. We all have holes in our life. We all have ways, you know, we've all sinned and fallen short. We have things we were born with or we've invited into our lives. And God's promise is he'll step into any of those areas and he can make whatever is weak, strong. Can I get an amen in church today? But here's the deal. And this is why there doesn't need to be any pressure today. He doesn't do it all at once. In fact, this next phrase, full and complete, means that which has been filled. But God is not like a dump a bucket on you kind of fill God. In fact, this word is the word pleroma in the, in the Greek. And it's actually a word picture of like a ship being filled. And you don't fill a ship. You don't just dump all the containers on a ship. What do you do? It's one piece at a time, one thing at a time. God's promises, you're gonna be finished and complete. If you'll follow God, if we'll follow God, God has great things in store for us. It's a beautiful life. It's a spiritual journey of growth and it's gonna happen. Here's what discipleship ultimately is, one step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So take the pressure off, take the weight off. The key is getting into that journey, letting salvation be that door for us. So here's the big idea today. In fact, this is the title of the message. No matter where you are in that spiritual journey, I just want you, if you get nothing else today, this is it, all right? To, to, to believe this promise today, and that is no matter where you are, God has more. Yeah. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, God has more. God. Your other neighbor, say, God has more. I just wanna build faith that wherever you are, God has more. And I love that our God is a God has more God because I gotta be honest today, I am a there has to be more kind of person. Any optimist out there, you're, just always, you're always looking for the little extra out there. Anybody out there, come on, wave at me. That's me, all right? So I look for it every single day, you know, at work with Highlands College or Motion or church, love what we're a part of. There's always more, more opportunity. I, hey, I really look forward on vacation. I am totally the early check-in, late check-out guy. Come on, I paid for that hotel, there has to be more. Come on, where are y'all at today, all right? Hey, listen, when we go out to eat, y'all, I've told you guys before, we have four boys. Listen, going out to eat is a big deal. So nine times out of 10, we go to a Mexican restaurant. Why? It's the glory of God, but there's more, free chips and salsa. And if you want a parent hat, go to Chewy's. It's our favorite. They also give your kids a dessert. Are you kidding me? It's amazing, all right? Because there has to to be more, this is true. This is like, I'm being vulnerable with you guys today. I never like going to sleep at night. And this is actually true about me. You could ask my friends. I always feel like going to sleep is giving up. It's like, all right, it's over. All the fun's been had. Let's just go to sleep. I actually, just so you don't, I'm not unhealthy. I do like sleep, but it's the moment where we're like, that's it? It's just time to go to bed? Come on, anybody out there? Just like, just me? That's awkward. Okay, I'll just keep moving, all right? So anyway. <laughs> but there has to be more. And I think, I think a lot of us are that way because honestly, America is a totally, there has to be more nation. We are the home of the infomercial. 1995, but wait, there's, more. oh, y'all got a little more in you than that. But wait, there's, more. some of y'all have bought something off a TV commercial, not because of the product, but because there has to be more. And when all of this is in our culture, you know, we have super size, which I think technically is now illegal because it was killing us but we are the home of super size. We're the home of venti. Like you can go to Starbucks and there's, there's you know, every, you know, the tall, the grande, no other country on earth, I do believe this is true, has a venti coffee. There has to be more in America. You can get an XL pizza. And I'm just gonna have to take a time out from the message from a moment because I do have one little soapbox illustration today. I feel a little bit like Pastor Dino, but I just gotta go there. Because one of the ways there has to be more in America is with water containers. So I grew up in the 80s and in the 80s, all you needed was a cup to drink water out of. <laughs> And I gotta be real honest, we didn't drink a lot of water. It was mostly Tang, come on, Capri Sun, and Sunny D, which they tried to market as healthy and it's like full of sugar. But anyway, so like, like there was this, and then after that, you know, we got convenient with it and we launched the water bottle. And that was, that, you would think that was enough, but come on, there has to be more. And out of nowhere came the Nalgene. 
And if you've ever seen an algae, it always looks just about like this. It's got stickers all over it. It's like the whole cool vibe. If you got an algae, you gotta have it looking just right. And then we try to get artsy with it. And some of y'all remember the swell bottle? Uh, y'all, it, swell bottle, anybody? Okay, it's kind of also a weapon. You can literally hit somebody with this thing. But then for the, the glory of God showed up and we got the Stanley Cup. Oh yeah, somebody just got saved right there, the Stanley Cup. I see them, y'all come into church with them and sometimes you drop them and they're really loud. But hey, there's got to be more. This is an actual water bottle. I bought this back in 21 days when I always try to improve my water habit. I only carry this thing around for like two days. It's really embarrassing because it's super heavy. And what do you do with this? It's like awkward in every meeting, uh, but this is a one gallon. It even tells you how often to drink the water. Um, but anyway, that's the one gallon water bucket because in America, there has to be more. And y'all are God. I know this is totally ridiculous, by the way, just side note, but I wanna press the point that where they're God, they're God, there has to be more, but not just a little more or incrementally more. Put the verse on the screen, Ephesians 3.20. This is a truth about your God. Ephesians 3.20 says, our God is the God who is able to do immeasurably more. Yeah. Not just a little more, everybody. Come on, church. Not just a little more than enough. Our God is the God who does immeasurably more. And if you've ever wondered what that looks like, come on, Harrison, bring it out for God's people today to be encouraged. <laughs> Oh, put your hands together for the world's large, only at Highlands, the world's largest Stanley Cup that is just beyond, because our God is a beyond God, and come on. But wait, there's more. Now listen, that is the most ridiculous illustration in the history of Highlands. And I know you clap once, but I, for my own insecurity, can you put your hands together one more time? Okay, that's now we're good, we're good, it's over. It's over, Phil, it's over. I promise it's over. It's over, I, I'm done with it. But there just has to be, I'm gonna keep pointing at it the whole message, it's gonna be awesome, but no. Here's the deal. I want it to burn in your hearts and our minds. That here's, here's the promise, really this whole series, every time we take a next step, we experience more of God. And that we can just never be finished with this process. That there's always more. So you just got saved, there's more. You've been following God for decades, there's more. You feel like you messed it up, maybe last night, there's more. You feel like you've hit a wall, there is more because our God is an immeasurably more God. And that's what this series, and that's really the heart of God, that's what it's all about. Salvation is the doorway into that beautiful life. And so all throughout scripture, the Bible paints a picture of more. And I just wanna take a few moments from one text today, one of my favorites, just to unpack this. And here's the big deal today. Every one of these seven weeks, we're gonna get into specifics of kind of the actions of how we experience more. But before we get into what we do, we gotta make sure we understand what God is trying to help us become, who he's trying to help us become. Because it's not about the doing. The doing is only accessing a way for us to continue to grow, which is all about us becoming who God has made us to become. And so I just wanna take a moment to reflect on 2 Corinthians 3. If you got your app, open it up. We're gonna take some notes here. Verses 16 through 18. Again, there's many places in the Bible that talk about all God has to offer. But I think this one is super cool. It says, but whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away for the Lord is a spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom so that all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the Lord. And the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Three points today, they're right there as I mentioned in your app note. The first one comes from that first verse, verse 16 but whenever someone turns to the Lord, so whatever step you take, the moment you get saved, you turn to him, but every day you take a step, you're continually to turn to him, to choose him, that veil is taken away. Write this down, that every step, every next step is a pathway to a deeper relationship with God. A deeper relationship with God. So I wanna take a moment just to unpack the word veil that was in that verse, because that could kind of be a little bit confusing. And there's a couple references to a veil in scripture. One is in the temple, which is a place that separated where the presence of God was from the rest of the temple. Uh, but this verse is actually referencing the, the veil that Moses wore when he came off Mount Sinai after receiving the law of God. And so he's up there experiencing God and he's, he's in God's presence. And the Bible says his face was actually essentially caught on fire. It was like glowing with the glory of God. And because of the sin of the people and the disconnection they had with God, when he came off the mountain, Instead of being drawn to that glory, the Bible says they were actually afraid of that glory. So Moses put a veil over his face and it symbolizes a disconnect that, was, that existed between God and God's people. But hey, everybody, because of what Jesus did, and we celebrated this last weekend at Easter, we no longer have anything to fear. And I wanna highlight that with a verse, Romans chapter five is a 
powerful verse. It says, therefore, since we have been justified, and that's what Jesus did on the cross, he justified us through faith. Now, all we need is faith. We have peace with God, so no fear. It's peace through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace we now stand. So now because of what Jesus did, everybody, we have access to God. What would have been impossible, what was impossible, that wall is now broken down, the veil is removed, and now there is a bridge into all of God that we can, step. every step we take, there's more of God. We never run out of experiencing more of God. And you just need to hear this today, his sole motivation in doing all of that is so he can have a relationship with you. God doesn't want anything from you. He wants everything for you. So I I got saved when I was 17 years old. Uh, What's interesting is that I actually grew up in church. So I mean, from the time I was a a child, literally an infant, I was in church my entire life. So I was around church and I even loved church, but I never experienced God. We're, We're gonna talk about this a little later in the message, why that might be the case. But I was around all the things of God. I grew up in a a small Methodist church, small town, Alabama. And y'all, I loved all of it. I loved Sunday school. I loved vacation Bible school. I was even remembering back in our church, maybe you grew up in a church like this. We had children's church. So like during the, it was like you, as a kid, you went into the big service, but then at some point in the service, they would play Jesus loves the little children. And we would all come down in the front. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And the the pastor would come out of the pulpit and he would like teach a little devotional uh, for us kids. It was, I mean, I loved, I loved all of that but I never connected with God. And so by the time I was 13, 14, 15 years old, I was struggling. I mean, I was deeply struggling with insecurity. I was, I mean, just completely wrecked by fear. I had so much fear on my life. And so I began to do what a lot of teenagers and young people, and honestly, a lot of us do. I just began to look to anywhere to fill the holes in my life. And every time I would look someplace else other than God, which is the only places I was looking, it just left me emptier and emptier and emptier until I was 17 years old and I got invited uh, to a local youth group at a little Baptist church a few miles away. And I would love to say I went for God because I was in a desperate place, but I actually didn't go for God. I went for a girl. That's my story. (laughs) Hey, God will use anything, right? And I went to meet this girl and I I knocked on the door. They actually did this youth ministry in a home that was near this church. And I knocked on the door. I was a few minutes late. Come on, when you're going to a new church, sometimes it's good just to be a few minutes late, you know, so it all gets settled. I'm like kind of walking in, feeling a little awkward, knock on the door. And I step in and for the first time in my life, I saw people who were truly in love with God. But I didn't even make a decision right then. It was actually a few months later at the end of a retreat called A Disciple Now, where on the uh, the way home, driving home from that retreat, I'm in my my truck, I'm listening to DC Talk. Anybody know DC Talk? Come on, witness, testify, Toby Mack. He still got it, I'll bring him out right now. If he can come out here, he can do it. So I'm listening to DC Talk and I'll, I'll never forget, I pull over on the side of the road, begin to weep. And I asked Jesus into my heart. Y'all, I was still a mess, but I had Jesus. <laughs> and what I knew immediately, how I knew it was real, is that fear. There's a lot of things I've continued and continue to work through, but immediately the fear was broken off my life. And I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, God had done something great in my life. And in the first weeks and months, it was just like continually experiencing him. And here's, and I, want, I want us actually to respond to this, because I think if you've been following Jesus for a while, you know what I'm talking about. If you'd asked me when I was 17, like, is this as good as it gets? I'd have been like, it can't get any better. This is amazing. But now 25 years later, all I can say is this. This is my testimony. It's just kept getting better and better. Come on, where are you out today? God just continues to do it. It's, it's hard to describe. All I know is this. He's given me access to a relationship that just keeps getting better and better and better. And that's what God has for you. Every next step is about knowing him. I love this quote from Brother Lawrence. He says, the more we know him, the more we will desire to know him. As love increases with knowledge, the more we know God, the more we will truly love him. We will learn to love him equally in times of distress or in times of great joy. And I love that last line, let us occupy ourselves with knowing God. Every step we take, we grow deeper. It doesn't matter where you start. I started at 17, maybe you're starting right now today and you're 30 or 40 or 50. I've seen 70, 80, 90 year olds give their heart to Jesus. It doesn't matter, God can take you right there and every step you take, you'll get more of his peace, more of his love, more of his wisdom, more of his forgiveness. God just has more for you today. It's a beautiful promise, come on, God has more. Here's number two, and that is also every step we take, we experience a life of true freedom. And this is a beautiful promise from God. So this is the second part, or actually verse 17 of 2 Corinthians 3. It says, for the Lord is the spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 
When I teach this, I love to highlight something that actually is a little bit counterintuitive. And that is the fact that freedom and lordship are connected. And if you wanna know what lordship is, an easy way to think about it is lordship. The lordship of God is a, is a space that has boundaries, it has borders. It's a, it's a zone where God says, if you live in this, you're under my lordship, you're under my ways, my word. And when we live in that space, the Bible says we experience freedom, but that's not how we normally think of freedom, especially right here in America. And I just wrote a few of these down and they're, they're obvious, but just to highlight the fact is normally when we think of freedom, we think freedom is living with no boundaries. So we think freedom is when we just throw all restraint to the wind. And we have entire industries that are created about giving us here in America and around the world the opportunity just to cast off all restraint. I mean, even, come on, the city of Las Vegas is built on this principle. <laughs> the, the marketing statement for Las Vegas is what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. The illusion that you can have no boundaries in this place, just do whatever you wanna do and that that's freedom. But hey, everybody, if you've ever tried anything like that, come on, it is the worst thing ever. It promises a lot, but it underdelivers. My favorite holiday is Thanksgiving for a lot of reasons I don't have time to go into. One is it just, there's no pressure of presence. To me, it's food and football. How much more Southern can you get than that? <laughs> Praise God for Thanksgiving. We should have it year round. It should be every three weeks, Thanksgiving. I don't know. But one of the things I think about when I think about Thanksgiving is that the eating involved in Thanksgiving is, it's like a once in a year opportunity that I personally prepare for. So I'll go like a day or so not eating very much because I'm, I'm ready to cast off all restraint and fill my plate with turkey and ham and casseroles. Come on, where y'all at? And all the, and listen, my wife can't let her food touch. I let it all touch. It ends up being just all one big. And I don't stop at one plate. I go back for the second plate. And then oftentimes the third plate. And then I hit that dessert, that pecan pie, which is just the best ever. And about two o'clock that afternoon, I feel like I could die. Because anytime we cast off restraint, we end up regret with regrets. Because freedom is not no boundaries. But here's the second one, and this one's definitely current right now, is that we think freedom is living with my own boundaries. Well, I'm gonna have my truth. That's a phrase right now we use all the time. I'm gonna have my truth. So maybe even pick a little bit of God, but a little bit of what I want, or maybe from this other religion, I'm gonna mix it all up. And actually many people who are studying America right now talk about the pluralism of America. We kind of all have our own miniature religions. Just a little of this and a little of that. And the bottom line is it's not freedom. When we create our own walls, all we're doing is walling ourselves off from God. That's good. That's good. Because freedom That's good. is ultimately only found in his boundaries. That's good. True freedom is living inside the boundaries of God. And when we're living in that space where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So check it out. Every next step is a journey deeper into that truth. Every time we do money God's way, we experience more freedom. Some of you experience that. When I do forgiveness God's way, even if it's counterintuitive, I experience more freedom. So our journey of next steps is every time I take a step, I put myself under his lordship. That's what discipleship really is. I'm learning to live like him. And when I do, I get freedom. And if you're here today and you're desperate for freedom, God's invitation is to just take another step closer to me and you'll experience more. And come on, the more you experience, the more you want. That God's way is the only way that works. And when we do it God's way, we experience his freedom. And here's the last one, and we're gonna, we're gonna pray together. It comes from that last verse in the text of 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. says, so that all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. The last one is this. Every time we take a step, we get really more clarity on our role in God's mission. And this ties right back to that great commission we read earlier, that there is a mission that God has for the earth and every believer is invited into it. And that is to go, to be a disciple so that we can go and make disciples. And the Bible says when we do that, what we're really doing is we're showing the world God's glory. And I know that's another, it's kind of today, maybe a theme, it's like a lot of words kind of that can feel churchy like commandment or glory or veil. But can I just tell you, this is a beautiful word. And a great way to understand glory is just that glory is ultimately the weight of God, or maybe even a better way to say it is, it's the sum total of all of God's attributes. His love, his peace, his joy, it's all of who he is. And the cool thing about God, it's like the sun, God cannot contain those things, he is always radiating those out, like the rays of the sun. That coming off our God are all of who he is. He's never withholding, by the way, any of who he is. All of who he is is eternally heading out into our, our world, into our lives, if we'll open our hearts up to him. The crazy thing though is until we get saved, I mentioned this earlier in my own story, 
We can be all around it, but may not see that glory. In fact, there's a reason for that. This is from 2 Corinthians as well. It says, the God of this age, the, the devil himself, has blinded the mind of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. But when we turn, the veil is removed. And the Bible says in verse 18, we just read it, two things happen. Number one, we now see it. And that's what I try to tell people. A lot of times in the South, at least, we think of, of, of our faith, like you know, a lot of times church attendance or whatever. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. The moment you get a relationship with Jesus, your first response is, oh my goodness, he's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea how beautiful God was, how real he was, how powerful he was, how much he has for me. And let me tell you something, when we see that, all we do is want more <laughs> of his glory. But the really cool thing is this, it doesn't just say we see, but as healthy followers of Jesus, that great commission life, we also reflect that glory. That's right. That's right. And, and Living our life on mission for God is as simple as this, being a mirror for God. We do some things, to, we share our faith and we serve, all those things are actions, but they come from a place of reflection. All we're doing is seeing God and just like a mirror, we're then reflecting God to the world. And we're just showing the world the glory of God, how good he is, how much he's changed our life. Come on, it's, our, it's the word of our testimony. That's what brings victory in our life and it also makes the impact in the people around us. So as a disciple, and this is the hope for this whole series, then we begin to make disciples by reflecting his image and his likeness. Can I get an amen in church today? That's the promise of God for every next step. There's a deeper relationship. There's more freedom and we get to be a part of God's mission. Are you kidding me? What a beautiful promise. That's discipleship. That's what God has invited us into. And it comes with ultimately with this promise, the last part of our text today. And the Lord, who is the spirit, makes us more and more and more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. And I've said it, I'll say it again. Doesn't matter if you start at 17 like me, you started last week at Easter, you start today, because I'm believing that's gonna happen here and at every location, where you gave your heart to Jesus at 50 or 80, it doesn't matter, wherever you start, God takes you from there and he takes you into his glorious image, changed into his likeness. That's where we're going in this series. The powerful thing is this, the weight and the pressure are off. Come on, we're not where we wanna be, but we're not where we used to be. That's the promise of every single step. So here's the question of the day and really the question of the whole series is, if God has all of this more in store, then what are we waiting for? And I know that rhymes, by the way. I really worked hard on that. That's just, you know, side note. Um, that was for all of y'all. If God has all this more in store, it's a powerful question. Then what are, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? I say we start today. So all these seven weeks are gonna be about next steps and we're gonna continue to grow deeper. But if you are okay with it, this may be breaking some kind of international law. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cancel for the next three minutes and 42 seconds the hassle-free guarantee at Highlands. It's canceled. That may be first time ever. We're canceling it because all of us need to take a next step. So my encouragement today, my prayer today is every single one of us taking a next step today so to help you with that, and your campus pastors talked about the app earlier, uh, to help you with that, we actually created a new page on your app today. It's on the home screen of your app. It actually looks like this right here. That is a link you can click on, just allows you to see kind of the, the next step menu here at Highlands. And this isn't even not all the next steps, but this is a lot of them. And we've divided them in different categories around our vision, how you can continue to know God, beginning a relationship with him or being a part of church on a weekly basis, spending time with God. A beautiful next step, by the way, under knowing God is today, we actually are, are having water baptism after every single service today. And it's a powerful next step. In fact, if you're one of those 6,444, this is your next step. Or if you're someone here today who has not made that decision, you've, you've, you've followed Jesus, you've given him your heart, but you've never gone public with that, through water baptism, this is your next step. And we have everything from a change of clothes, the people who will take pictures, everything you will need uh, for this to happen right here today. And my encouragement is, I'm spending a little bit of time here because it's a powerful next step. In fact, I gave my heart to Jesus at 17, maybe a little embarrassed to say, I didn't immediately get water baptized. Maybe that's your story. For me, there was a couple of reasons why. At first, I didn't really understand it. I didn't understand that it was a command of God. It was not optional. We read it earlier in Matthew 28. Jesus says to be baptized as a disciple. 
And honestly, secondly, and this is just my story, I was honestly a little embarrassed, embarrassed to go public with that. I have no idea why looking back now. I don't know if I was embarrassed to do it in front of my friends or just really, it was ultimately the tension in my own heart is if I go public with this thing, I'm not turning back. And I'll never forget finally deciding to make that, that, to make that decision and going to my parents. And I was afraid they were gonna be upset because I'd been sprinkled as a, as a child. Maybe that is you as well. I kind of, in, in our tradition, they sprinkled you and I'd already been confirmed. And I thought for some reason that would like dishonor all of that. And it, it was nothing like that at all. That was a beautiful thing that we did. It was a great tradition, but it wasn't the same as being baptized as a believer. So at 17 years old, I invited my family, I invited my friends a couple months after I got saved. And I'll never forget, they put a robe on me. I walked down that aisle and I went in that water and I came out of that water and I, there was no turning back for me. That was the day that I said publicly, I am with Jesus. And I'm just encouraging you, if you haven't done that, do it. Because there have been many hard days in my journey with God where I have looked back on that and said, that has it's been a rock for me in my faith. I can't turn back because I am with Jesus. And even after our last service, we already have people getting baptized. I got a couple pictures. I went over here, it's at the, in the theater. I went over to see, this is Elizabeth, everybody, who's a college student over at Bama. And she had given her heart to Jesus, but she had never gone public with, her water, bapti with water baptism, with her faith. And y'all, she got baptized today. Just had the most beautiful look. Come on, put your hands together. Isn't that amazing? Okay, this, this happened this morning. And this, this can be your story today. And what I love is that after she shared that she was gonna get baptized, y'all, her mom got baptized as well. This is her mom, Margaret, got baptized as well. That was after the last service. So if that's you, do not hesitate. Do not hesitate, take that step. Uh, on that next steps menu, you're also gonna see ways you can continue to, to find freedom and discover a purpose and, e and even uh, to make a difference. In fact, tonight, a great next step, maybe if you have never gone through the growth track, step one is tonight, which is a chance for this church to become your church. And uh, all of your campus pastors will let you know where that happens and when that happens. Bottom line is this, we have an opportunity to take a step and we need to do it now. This is where we'll end. I know this is a massive leap from a giant Stanley Cup to the law of inertia, but here we go. An object at rest tends to stay at rest, but an object in motion tends to stay at motion. The key is just, just to get moving. So here's our prayer. God, what is my next step? Write it down and let's pray together today. God, thank you so much for your amazing church, for every person and the sound of my voice. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt because it's all throughout your word and it's been my experience is that you have more for every single person. God, I pray that you would speak so clearly in this moment. We make room for you with no distractions in this moment for you to speak. I wanna speak to a very specific group of people here today. Maybe you were a C or a D last week or maybe this is your first day in church or you just have been around for a while but you've never truly given your heart to God. I wanna give you a chance to take that beautiful, most important next step. We will never embarrass you or call you down front at any of our locations. But if you're ready to give your heart to Jesus here in a moment, I'm gonna have you just lift your hand and we're gonna pray together. And you know this is you because God is knocking on the door of your heart. And what he's inviting you into is an experience with him as your savior and as your Lord. And as your savior, what God is offering today is a chance for you to be forgiven of your sins. Literally, the Bible says your sins are, are as far as the east is from the west. For once and for all, for the weight and the condemnation, and whatever it is that the enemy's been throwing at you to be broken off, and just like I experienced, you just get to immediately step into a life of freedom and a life of the power of God. But he's also inviting you into an experience with him as your Lord. And he has a way for us to live. He's inviting you into a discipleship journey where he, wanna, he wants you to continue to grow closer to him and experience more of his freedom and a lifelong journey of more and more and more. And if that's you today, it's not about church attendance. It's not about anything other than a true relationship with Jesus, but you know, you can't leave church today without that. That is your next step on the count of three. I'm gonna have you lift your hands at every location. One, two, three. If that's you, come on, lift your hands. Amen, I see that hand, great job. I see this hand up front. I see that hand right there, great job. Looking all around the room, there's hands, many hands up all around the room, I love it. I love when I see just the, the spirit and the power of God moving. Put your hands down and just pray this prayer quietly where you are. Just say, Jesus, today I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins, my mistakes. I'm turning away from all of that and God, I am running to you. Be my Lord, my Savior. And God, fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can live for you for the rest of my life. And God, thank you for all those who just made that amazing decision. 
We bless them and God, your word says all of heaven is celebrating right now that decision. The old is gone and the new has come. God, I just thank you that you have opened a door into a life long journey of change and growth. God, we pray blessings over them. God, I pray now for each of us, just right there where you are, let me pray for you. God, for all of us, as we ask you what our next step is, that whether we have been following you for decades or we're just starting this journey, that all of us would take that next step. It's time to get moving. God, that you've invited us into more. And God, today we say yes to that more, more of you, less of us. And God, we thank you that you're gonna be with us all on the way. We give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Can you put your hands together and celebrate all those who just made that decision?